Hey everyone, it's Mr. Clancy, and in today's lesson we're going to be taking a look at the powers of Congress. And when we talk about powers, we of course are meaning the actions Congress can take or the things that they can do. And generally speaking, the powers of Congress are separated into two categories. They're enumerated powers and they're implied powers. Before we get going though, make sure you download the document attached to this YouTube video so that you can follow along with the guide. So let's get started with the enumerated powers. The enumerated powers are powers that are specifically listed in the Constitution. They're actually written down and stated as powers of Congress. These can be found in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. There are many enumerated powers, but two common ones uh, are the power to declare war and the power to collect taxes. You can take a look at these enumerated powers by following the link on the guide in Step 1. Uh, that'll take you to the Heritage Guide to the Constitution. And if you scroll down to Article 1, Section 8, you'll see a long list of the enumerated powers that Congress has. After you've had a chance to study these enumerated powers, take a few minutes to decide which of these powers do you think are more important or the most important powers of Congress. Once you've got an idea, go ahead and list your five enumerated powers in, uh, on the guide and the table provided, and provide a short explanation of why you think this is the most important. Okay, so we've got an understanding of Congress's enumerated powers, uh, but these are not the only powers that Congress has. Congress has other powers called implied powers. These powers are not listed specifically in the Constitution, but they are necessary powers in order for Congress to carry out their enumerated powers. Uh, a common example is the power to establish a bank. It doesn't say anywhere that Congress can uh, start a bank, but it does say that Congress has the enumerated power to coin money and collect taxes. A lot of people could argue that having a bank is a necessary thing in order to collect taxes and coin money. Another example might be the draft. It does not say specifically in the Constitution that Congress can set up a draft, but it does say that they can raise an army, and so a draft may be necessary to do that. The Constitution establishes these implied powers in uh, Article 1, Section 8, near the bottom, where it says, uh, Congress can make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers, and all other powers vested by this Constitution, the government of the United States, or in any department or office thereof. This is known as the Necessary and Proper Clause, and it basically says that Congress has other powers that are not listed in the Constitution. Uh, these would be powers that are necessary in order for them to carry out those listed powers. Uh, a great example of implied powers can be seen in the Supreme Court case, McCulloch v. Maryland. Take a few minutes to study the uh, resources I've given you on the guide to get a good understanding of McCulloch v. Maryland and answer the questions that go along with it. So in the case of McCulloch v. Maryland, you were able to see that Congress has implied powers, so that there are things Congress can do uh, that are not listed in the Constitution, but they are able to do that because it is necessary for them in order to carry out their enumerated powers. So now that you have an understanding of what implied powers are, take a look at your five enumerated powers that you listed in step number one. Uh, to pick one of those enumerated powers and see if you can think of some implied powers that might go along with that. Some things that would need to be done in order to carry out that enumerated power. Feel free to do some research as well and look into that enumerated power.